thank you very much for your interest in single parents and single parent families. Um, once a journalist, as Ginger Rogers, you may remember her, she was the big star in the 30s, 40s, 50s. Uh, and the journalist asked her what it was like to be the partner of world famous and amazing Fred Astaire. And uh, she said, sure, he's great, but don't forget that I do everything he does. Only I have to do it, you know, backwards and in high heels. And whenever I hear this anecdote, I always think of single parents because we as single parents have to do the same job only under a bit or not just a bit more difficult circumstances. Whenever we, we think of single parents and single parent families, we have a picture on our mind. Uh, we have sometimes stereotypes in our minds and we think that single parents are just the same everywhere. But this is not the case. When we take a closer look, we see a big picture, but if we, we take a closer look, we will see the smaller lives and the smaller fates of families, children and children and parents. Just le let's take a first look at uh, who we are talking about, how many people we are talking about. I will start with my own country. In Hungary, uh, we have a population of less than 10 million people altogether. Out of these 10 million people, 300,000 parents raise their children on their own. And the number of children is uh, a little bit above half a million. So if we add these numbers, we will see that close to 10% of Hungary live in single parent families. The ratio of single parent families in, in my country has doubled in the past 40 years, which is a big, a, big, a big rise in numbers. In the last couple of years, in the last few years, this number has slowed down or the rise of the the number of the ratio of single parent families have declined a bit, but still it is a very high number. And it is not only in Hungary. If we take a closer look, researchers say that in Europe, a minimum of 30% of the next generation of children will be brought up by single parents. It may be the entire childhood, it may be a part of their childhood, or it may be several parts of their childhood, because some, some uh, children start as, you know, living in two parent families, then they live in single parent families, then they may live in patchwork families, and it can happen that they live in single parent families again. So it can be like a combination of different uh, ways for children to spend their childhood in. In the European Union, numbers are around 9 million, 10 million, depending on how we calculate. This is the number of families living in uh, single parent families. In the United States, around 22 million children live in single parent families. And if we take a look at the world universal numbers, it is more than 300 million children in the world huge numbers, very big numbers, and still very little attention compared to the scale. And another very important issue is that more than half of these families are in need. They live in poverty. And this is why they need an extra attention because the risk of poverty is much higher in single parent families than in any other family type. Uh, there can be very different reasons of why a parent can become a single parent. Very often it is divorce, but in more cases than we would think, it is the loss of a parent. It can be a parenthood, a single parenting by choice. It can be her choice, but very often it's his choice. We um, see many families where adoption uh, led to a single parenting. And there are parents who are not parents, but grandparents, great grandparents. We have a family here in our center uh, where the great grandmother uh, raises a girl. 
the great grandmother is 91 year old and uh, the girl is 17 and uh, they are really in need of help. We tend to think that life looks like that, that the world looks like that, but in reality, a lot of people are missing from, from this world, from this optimal and perfect world. And when somebody becomes a single parent, it will influence not only their parenting or family life, but it will influence a lot of different um, areas. I will tell you later in details about these areas, but just as an example, it will influence the family's financial position. It will influence children's opportunities, equal or unequal opportunities. It will influence the parents' health, the parents' employment possibilities, and it will just influence everyday logistics. Living in single parent families will raise a lot of questions. We can call them problems or we can call them challenges. I think the thing, the content is just the same. The main issue is that a parent who lives without another partner will have to work 48 hours a day. It is just the normal single parenting life because although the number of parents is fewer, the course, the daily chores, the daily duties are just the same. This is why we as a single parent center in Hungary will have to concentrate on offering practical solutions to single parent problems. What are these practical solutions? Psychological difficulties are very common in single parent families. And I think it is very understandable. Every or almost every single parent family's history starts with a trauma. It starts with a, a difficult situation and parents have to deal and children have to deal with very practical issues in the time of a trauma. Uh, it is not easy. And this is why we offer psychologists, we offer peer groups, we offer different kinds of mental help to these parents because they are just in a very difficult situation when single parenting starts. The first, I would say one or two years can be really tough. This kind of help, this kind of, um, uh, of support, then even practical issues can, uh, can get into, into a difficult uh, solution. When we talk about peer groups, it is important to say that as there are very many different uh, ways to live, there are different peer groups in our, our center. We have father's group, we have groups for people after a divorce, we have widows or widowers group, we have single mothers by choice, and we have um, groups for um, pregnant moms. We have groups for parents, single parents with disabled children, with empty nesting uh, parents like myself. It is not easy, it is very tough. We have uh, peer groups for abused parents, abused families, and so on and so forth. An expert like mental health expert, experts can offer a lot of help, but peer groups can be just as important or in certain periods, they can be even more important to offer support in this situation. Financial problems, as I mentioned, more than half of single parent families live in poverty or in need under difficult situation. Um, I think it is very easy to understand because most of the costs just remain the same after a divorce or after staying alone, but the income of the family uh, may just uh, get a half or even less than half. This is why what we offer is a lot of free services, free holidays, free camps. We also offer donations, especially under COVID. We experienced that, um, that families got into very difficult financial situations, for example, after having lost their jobs. This is why we, we contribute like food, we contribute IT, um, support, for example, laptops, uh, telephones. 
we contribute school equipment, cleaning um, equipment, and so on and so forth. We talk about tons of these donations, and this is something that we do, just like all the other services, permanently, regularly, on a permanent basis. And we also offer financial coaching because um, you know the saying about offering fish and teaching how to fish. So besides offering fish, we also would like to help these families learn how to, how to conduct, conduct their financial um, um, behavior in a more practical way. Conflicts are present in many of the families. Um, when uh, we talk about divorces, unfortunately, the conflict will continue even after divorce. We see many families living in a battlefield, actually, with continuous um, uh, problems with child support, with continuous problems with, uh, with the other parents' right to see the children, and so on and so forth. This is why we offer workshops, for example, about how to deal with your ex. It is important because people don't know, how would they know how to behave in, uh, in such a circumstance? We offer mediation to help parents uh, communicate even after a divorce, but we also offer mediation between parents and children, especially with adolescents who are not always easy. And when they grow up in single parent families and when they actually grow up in a battlefield, as I mentioned, this type of, of mediation is even more important between parents and children. Uh, we offer family therapy, legal advice, just to make it clear what one parent and the other parent have the right to do. And we also offer prevention so that uh, families don't get to this situation. Logistical difficulties are really, really very challenging because you have, to, you have to do the job of two people when picking them up at school, when bringing them food during the day, when working, when having your homework and so on and so forth. You would need at least eight hands to fulfill that and you don't have it. So you really need to be a logistical acrobat to, to do all the jobs that you have. This is why it is important to help out parents with logistics. We offer child care, um, just to give you a kind of a, a feeling, I'm sitting in a, right now in a part of our single parent center, which is our, our, our playhouse. Let me just show you. This is the part of our playhouse. This is, where, this is where we take care of children, either when the parents are here in our center at a workshop or at a training or at a consultancy and whatever, or they can just leave their children here if they have something to do outside to, do, to take care of things. And of course, summer holidays are always very difficult. In Hungary, we have one week in the, in the spring, one, way, one week in the autumn, and we have 10 weeks during the summer. Uh, and of course, during the winter, we have two weeks holiday. It's very long. And it is sometimes impossible to solve when parents have to work. This is why we offer children's camps, uh, because, uh, because this way uh, parents can work with no problems. Um, I'm gonna talk about the, the costs of, um, of our services, but for example, a one week children's camp costs three euros. It in, involves all the services, it involves um, all the food, it involves everything basically. So it's more like a symbolic cost. Isolation and loneliness is, um, is probably one of the most difficult issues of single parenting. And this is why we offer programs, programs, and programs for parents. They can be yoga, they can be sports, they can be dance, concerts here in our center, or we can, they can come to excursions uh, with us. They can go to, to outside programs with us. So we try to organize uh, events where they can actually relax a bit. Um, 
especially when I don't think it's easy to find a community when you are 20 or when you are 30, but it's definitely becoming harder and harder as you get older. So even if uh, you have a free evening, for example, Saturday, what do you do? Uh, what do you do when maybe some friends have just got lost during the divorce period? Because not only one, of, one part of the family, but many friends can get lost also when a couple separates or split up. So offering programs is really sometimes a very important way to recharge batteries. Although um, the number of single parent families is very high, it is very high, not only in Hungary, but in many other countries as well, they are still quite invisible in society. We are not a chic issue to talk about. We are not the kind of families that everybody would like to show off with. This is why I think that it is very, very important for us. It is our big responsibility to make these families visible, make these families heard in society towards other people and towards decision makers as well. Two very important new laws were passed last year and started in the beginning of this year, the 1st of January, in order to make single parents' life easier. One is uh, related to, to orphans allowance, which has doubled. The minimum of orphans allowance has doubled since the beginning of the 1st of January. And the other important issue is uh, child support, which is a nightmare, I think in every country, not only in Hungary. And it creates a lot of problems among or, or between parents and, uh, and for families. From the 1st of January, if a parent doesn't pay the child support that he or she is supposed to pay, uh, the state is gonna stand up for the parent and the state is going to pay this child support to the family. Um, again, this is a, a major issue because close to 25% of children do not get child support. And we talk about poverty in single parent families. It is partially due to the fact that some parents for some reason just forget that having a child doesn't end when they get divorced. We have this ch these children until the day we die. So lobbying, showing the, the interest of single parent families, bringing up issues that cause difficulties for them is a very important uh, responsibility that we have. Also social education to show, to make films, to make movies, to, to, to pay more attention on how the environment of single parent families can help how they can notice that there is a need here. Sensitization is an important part and active media presence. We have on average around four or 500 media coverage a year. So we try to make it very active so that we can be, not we as an institute, but we as single parents can be heard and seen. We, uh, we conduct researches about single parent families because uh, they do not really exist in Hungary. We do not have real researches. And this is why we, we are just uh, finishing one and we have just started another. The one we are finishing is uh, something that I haven't really seen in international um, researches very often either. It is about single parents raising disabled children. Um, many families break up when uh, the child turns out to have some kind of a problem, disability, a kind of illness, which is continuous or permanent and so on and so forth. So these families, um, I think they are in a much harder situation than single parent families on average or families with disabled children, but with two parents. Still, we know very little about them. This is why we started this research and we are going to have the results, I would say in a week or in two weeks. And I will be happy to share it with you uh, later on if, um, 
if disability as a, as a topic comes up. The other research that we have just started is about uh, shared parenting, shared parenthood, uh, because this is also something that uh, we know very little about. I mean, the background here in Hungary. And we also offer an award every year to several parents. This, the, this is the Remarkable Parents Award. And uh, the, the aim, the goal of this award is again, to bring more attention to the heroic life many of these parents lead. Work-life balance has been an, a very frequent issue here at COFASA as well. And when we take a look at single parents' life, we see that work-life imbalance is much more frequent. When you are alone with, with one, two, three, four, or even more children, uh, you are not the number one um, uh, goal or the number one preference in the labor market. This is why we partially offer help in preparing uh, on how to enter the labor market. We offer workshops, we offer trainings, we offer job fairs, um, but we also do work placement. We have um, found jobs for close to 200 parents in the last, I would say, two, two and a half years. Uh, it is life-saving. I mean, when you're a single parent, you just cannot afford not working. Lack of me time. I mean, when you're a parent, lack of me time is kind of a base, but when you are alone, me time is a, sometimes an illusion. And this is why we try to offer um, partially pampering kind of, I, I can find a better word, pampering kind of, of uh, programs like uh, art therapy courses or health projects for, for um, parents. And also for Mother's Day, we organize beauty hours for moms as well, when they can just concentrate on themselves a little bit. And no place to recharge batteries. I think I've already mentioned that and, uh, and uh, the solutions that we offer in order to find some kind of a, a plug to do that. Well, this is what it is like to live in single parent families as parents, but it is not easy not always easy to live in single parent families as children either. I'm not saying that all the time, but in many cases, we will find problems like the lack of equal opportunities. And this is why children, single parent children need partially practical support and they also need fun factor so that they can remain children even under difficult situations. Very often they have less childhood. They have to become grown-ups much sooner than they are supposed to do. And this is why we also offer a lot of programs to children. Of course, we have Santa and of course we have Easter and of course we have Christmas and uh, Children's Day, but we also offer a lot of uh, courses, a lot of programs like how to make films, how to make fun programming. Um, we have um, at least two children's programs every month when there is no COVID. Of course, under COVID, it has uh, changed or varies, unfortunately. Limited resources for school. And this is why uh, there is free mentoring here in eight or maybe already nine different school subjects for different uh, age groups. And starting this year, we are offering scholarships for single parent children. I hope that this is gonna be a, a big, big thing. I'm very, very excited about it because this is a new initiative this year. Uh, they also have psychological problems they, that they need to deal with. This is why we offer different kinds of therapies with art, with music, and of course, all the mental experts are at their disposals, uh, disposal as well less children's programs, and I have already mentioned that we are doing our best to offer more childhood to these children. 
they have less holiday. Uh, many children just do not have any, for example, summer holiday, nothing, zero, not even a day. And I think it is we grown-ups who have the duty and the responsibility to offer this to these children. So we offer camps, we offer holidays, uh, camps, for example, day camps here, uh, starting in the single parent center, but at the same time, having lots of different programs outside, of course, and live-in camps where they go to Balaton, which is a, a beautiful lake here and um, in the mountains. So to places where they wouldn't normally go. And also we offer holidays for the family. So when they have the chance to go with their parents, unfortunately, very often we see that, that the kind of holiday we offer is actually the first that the, the family has experienced in their entire life. Um, I have mentioned costs and that uh, like, for example, um, um, a day camp costs three euros a week. Um, a one week holiday, for example, at the lake or in the mountains is about three, three euros as well for the family. So this is something like a symbolic fee. Otherwise, basically they are practically free. They may have more stress to, at school, and this is why uh, we offer this mentoring. This is why we offer laptop donations so they can, for example, study at home. During COVID, it was quite a, quite a big problem. And uh, last year during COVID, uh, we had an adolescent study groups for close to 30 uh, children between the age of 11 and 17. So these are the problems, these are the solutions. And now let me just uh, show you some things and uh, introduce you the place where I'm sitting right now. This is the single parent center of Budapest. Um, this is a pioneering initiative, uh, which was established close to four years ago. It will be four years in May, but the foundation that has actually made this and that has uh, created the single parent center was established in 2005. So we are going to be 17 years old this year. Uh, and of course the aim is to create equal opportunities for more than half a million children and for 300,000 parents. Um, there is a very simple story behind this, uh, this foundation. I founded it in 2005 because I became a single mother. So it was just as simple as this. And um, when I was in need for some support, for some company, for some advice, I just realized that there was none. And um, when we started to, to work with uh, volunteers and when we started to uh, set up this foundation, this was when I realized that how many peers, how many other families like ours were around us. And I still don't understand that we are still the only uh, single parent organization in Hungary. And there are not very many single parent organizations around the world. Um, I think for these numbers, there is a, a big need of support and more support. Maybe this is one of the reasons why we had the chance to, to introduce and to present our center at the United Nations uh, two, almost three years ago as an international good practice. And uh, I think it's also important to mention that we offer special support during COVID and we very hope like everyone else that this is going to, to end very soon. I'm in the COVID. So the center that I'm sitting in is partially a community space. We have offices here that parents can use. Uh, there are co-working uh, spaces where people can work, people can study. And of course, we organize a lot of events, a lot of conferences, workshops, trainings, everything I have mentioned so far. Our activities focus on six different uh, areas. I have already mentioned a lot of them, but as you can see, there is an area when we help in crisis, 
there is an area related to employment. There is an area related to programs, to community building, not only in Budapest. We have 11 uh, clubs and communities around the country, around Hungary, and we have eight communities outside the borders in Slovakia, in Romania, and, uh, and down in the south, in Serbia, in the Hungarian communities as well. So altogether, there are 19 other places, towns, where are, these are not offices, they are communities that are there to, to give support, to give a community uh, to single parents and single parent families. We offer parental support as well because uh, it is not just obvious about how to be good parents when you are alone. And we can see that parents have uh, a lot of uh, need and, uh, and, um, and they, they, would, they would need help a lot in, about how to be good parents. Uh, the fifth is activities for children. We offer a lot of things, I have, as I have already mentioned. And uh, of course, we try to do um, a lot to prevent families from becoming single parent families. So besides the programs that I have mentioned, we, are, we, we organize trainings, we offer uh, groups and, and, and programs for patchwork families because uh, living in patchwork families is, is just not easy. It is not very simple. And, uh, and for a child to become a single parent child for the second time is maybe harder than to become, to become single parent child for the first time. And this is why we try to offer help to these families as well, to keep this family intact. We have a playhouse. This is where I'm sitting right now. And the reason I'm sitting in a playhouse is that because we are going to have a program soon outside and it is quite loud or it can be loud. So this is nice and, and, and quiet here. This is why I'm sitting next to this ship that you can see in the picture. So we, we offer child care, we offer baby programs here, we offer programs for older children, and of course we take care of children when uh, parents need some fresh air and they need to breathe a bit. We have a cafe outside, of course, so that uh, parents and not only parents can just come in, sit down, have, uh, have some, some time and uh, they can see and feel what we do here. When we opened the single parent center, it was quite funny to see how people was, were like peeping in through the windows because they weren't sure what was going on. I mean, they had no idea what a single parent center was. And uh, when we opened the cafe, they just felt much braver to enter because uh, there was no risk. They could just have a coffee, sit down, stay here for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then come back maybe the day after and ask for help. And just um, to give you um, um, an idea about what and how many people and how we do it, uh, in the last close to four years, I, as I, I have said, we have helped more than 24,000 families in these 43 months with, with our services, with our leisure activities, camping holidays, with our programs, events, child care. We have a, fa a family, I almost, almost said we have a family of 10, 11 colleagues, but I don't think it's very far from reality. It's almost like a family of colleagues who work here. It's the 11 of us and actually a new colleague is going to start on Monday. So it will be the 12 of us soon. And we have 80 plus volunteers. It's getting close to hundred volunteers actually. This is how we can uh, offer um, all our service, services for free. So parents don't have to pay for the, the lawyer, the psychologist, the teachers, the trainings, nothing. And this is the, this is the big milestone, the big project of this year. Uh, very soon, hopefully in the spring, we are going to open our second single parent center. 
Uh, Buda is the other side of the city. We have Budapest and Buda is one side of the river and Pest is the other side of the river. Right now we are in Pest, this is one side and we are going to open our second single parent center on the other side of the city as well. Um, it's gonna be beautiful again, like this one. And, uh, and uh, it's important partially to offer a place which is closer to, to many parents who have difficulties reaching, um, for example, this part of the city. And also we would like to offer a wider range of services based and planned for those specific needs that those parents would like to have in the new center. And of course, when you talk about working for single parent center, it is not only for a, for a foundation, for a civic organization, um, working with single parents. It is very important to cooperate. It is very important to work together with other civic organizations, because these, these families are not only single parent families, they, they are also families who are large families, 10% of single parent families are large families at the same time. They are families who, for example, raise uh, children with uh, different disabilities, they need special help. They are families who, I don't know, who have special requirements in eating. So other civic organizations are here with us and we try to work together for these families together. And it is also very important to work with decision makers on a community level, on a national level, and on international level as well. Because uh, when you talk about close to 10% of a country, of a, of a society, it is not the range of one civic organization. You need much higher decisions and you need, mu you need much higher steps to help these families. And this is why I think it is very, very important that uh, we started this year with these two, two new laws. It shows that this open, openness, this interest in different kinds of family types is there. And uh, this is how we can, we can actually do our, our, our job and our work. But also as individuals, I mean, whenever we look around, everybody, everybody has single parent families around them. Everybody has single parent families in their family, uh, among the friends, at work, everyone. So sometimes you don't need like big national projects. Sometimes you just need to ring the bell and ask uh, the parent whether they need something from, from the, from the st store or when she or he is at home with, uh, with their children who is sick, with a child who is sick, just to ask them whether you can go and pick something from the pharmacy because they won't be able to leave and, and leave their children alone at home. These are small things. These are, these are tiny things on the surface, but these are very important things when you, you can help these families. You also need to cooperate with business decision makers because uh, we have a wall here outside covered with the, the logo of our, with the logos of our, um, partners with our, our, our business partners who give different types of help to our families. Uh, I mentioned food, I mentioned donations, but also programs, also services. We have, for example, a special um, mobile tariff for single parent uh, families, which is about, uh, well, the cost is about the quarter of a normal business uh, cost. This is a, an important way to help, for example, as a business uh, partner. And of course, you have to raise your voice. You have to make these families heard and visible um, because you cannot help unless these people are seen. If uh, we don't know the problems, if these problems are not visible, then we just cannot reach anything in helping uh, these families with their problems. I'm not sure where I am with, my, with time, but uh, if you have questions, if you have comments, if you have anything to add, I will be just very happy to answer and uh, to, to share. 
And uh, in the meantime, I'd like to, to share my, um, my email address with you and uh, um, the website of our organization. There is a, a part in English as well. So you can, you can read some things in English as, as well if later on you have anything to, to ask or add or just to contact us.